Uh, the internet's crashed. Everybody's excited, except for me. And there's only one person to talk to. I've never, ever met this man. Dave Mason, music journalist and radio presenter. Is that the Dave Mason? Oh, one of the. The other one was in Fleetwood Mac, Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy, and I did... Uh, uh, oh, are you the Jeremy Kyle that used to work at a radio station I started at? I met you in a corridor in ITV once. Did I? Now, who's the, who's the connection between us? Um, Dave Greenwood, David Rogers, Howard Bowles, uh, Bob McCready, people that started Phil out. Easton, the legend. The late, great Phil Easton, who was at Radio City, where I went on to uh, after leaving Orchard God, FM. you've aged, haven't you, son? You've right. aged. You've aged. I look great. You've aged. What's happened, Mason? How old are you now? It's the same T-shirt. Yeah, it is. How old are you now? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Sorry, having trouble hearing you. I'm 60 now, honestly. But don't worry about it. I haven't been able to move my face for 15 years and my teeth, you could literally ice without worrying about it. That's, that's a hairpiece, though, clearly. <laughs> nice. Yours obviously isn't. Did his hair and forgot to bring it. Anyway, DM, uh, great to have you on, mate. Um, <laughs> for you. those of us old enough to remember, I mean, they were... Uh, Britpop in the 90s. I mean, they were extraordinary. There was that big contretemps with Blur and everything. But but Oasis yeah. were the first, I thought at the time, massive British rock band since Queen. Would I be right or wrong? Uh, one of them. They had problems cracking America. Mm. So what you had, I think, in that debate is the fact that there was a second British invasion of America in the 1980s. So the likes of U2, Tears of Fears, Duran Duran, and those bands were bigger in America than Oasis were. But what you got with Oasis with guitar music was they really made guitar music big and cool and trendy mm. again. It's gone out of fashion this time around, Jeremy. Um, there was a recent thing about guitar bands uh, not being signed and not being in the charts. And the one good thing, I think, of a resurgence of Oasis is inspiring maybe guitar bands and maybe even the music industry to look at guitar music again where it's turned away. Uh, and the reason they haven't liked signing them is because fallout, bands break up. If you have two lead songwriters, the likes of Lennon and McCartney, remember Dave and Ray Davis out the kinks mm. in the 60s, famously taking lumps out of each other. The Everly Brothers, uh, Difford and Tilbrook from Squeeze. How could uh, he? He's, he's like a font of information. I'm just sitting here thinking, what's wrong with spanking your plank in public? There's nothing wrong with a good spank, of course, but these guys write songs together and they fall out. So. It, it doesn't happen in um, Coldplay because all four get involved. Oh, and don't it's, bore me about the most boring very news. Nice go, to, go to a Coldplay concert, want to go home. Um, but this would, is great, isn't it? This is rock and roll. It is rock and roll. You're right. It's dirty. It's grimy. It's not. You never know what you're going to get. Um, you That's attended, terrible. I didn't know this, you attended the launch party of their album, What's the Story, Morning Glory, in 1995. Where was that, Bob? That happened just behind Harrods, and Noel, actually, uh, there was another guy who used to work at the radio station you and I were just talking about, and he and I were doing different rock shows. I was doing an indie show in Liverpool, he was doing a rock show, we met up, we had too many scoops of champagne, there was a beautiful Oasis logo ice sculpture, which cost a couple of grand even then. Uh, Liam saunters up to me on the stairs going, all right, who are you, what are you doing here? Noel's being very calm and friendly. Their mum's there, Peggy. This is great news, by the way, for her that her two sons. Yeah. She's the one who's really chuffed for with this. And um, we went to the launch of it. And afterwards, um, myself and, and this guy, who is a friend of mine, um, we had a bit of a scuffle in, in the street, a little bit of a wrestling match after the Oasis launch party. And Noel came out and went, all right, what, what are you two doing? And broke it up. Couldn't believe oh, it. What a great story there is. Dave Mason, the thug, beat up yeah. one of his friends, he hasn't got any now, uh, whilst he was at the Oasis gig. Can I ask you a question? Is and That's it... a bit tabloid of you there. You know, you've just turned that slightly, haven't you? Hey? It's, it's called producing the story, man. <laughs> um, on a serious note, um, have they made up or is it about money? It's both. Um, they will have made up, I'm sure. I really hope that the insurance premiums aren't too high. And let's really <laughs> also hope that... There is peace and goodwill in the Gallagher household this Christmas because if they have a bust up over the turkey and the uh, volivants with Peggy, then this could all go south before next July, couldn't it? He because once told me, uh, Liam Gallagher, in, in, a, in, a, in a semi polite way, that his mother Peggy loved me. I remember that. It's the only, thing I've, the only claim of fame I've got. But their music was, I, I, you're absolutely right, Dave. It was about, it was, it was just like rock, wasn't it? Rock and roll, guitar riffs, left, right, and centre, throwing yeah. stuff off stage. It was, it, was, it was good old fashioned rock and roll. It'll be interesting like to truth. see whether. It resonates. I mean, I know the internet's broken a lot, but I wonder whether it will bring any new people in. 
It will because they're a band that you pass down to your children. Yeah. You know, there's a song about lasagna that me and my daughter used to sing called Digsy's Dinner. I knew Digsy in Liverpool. A lot of their songs were based on influences and bands in Liverpool, believe it or not, who are still going. And um, yeah, that there are songs you pass through the generations. So that will continue. And next year, I, th I think th the big talking point, Jeremy, this is one for you to take away, actually. Let's ask the question, working class band? Really? We'll see that when the ticket prices are published on Thursday. Let me ask you a question. Are you... Are hundreds you... of pounds in the cost of living crisis, yeah. that's still the preserve of the middle classes if they're hundreds of pounds. Uh, good, no, very good, very good. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Have you, are you working on the radio at the moment? Um, I can, I live in Bath, so I, I do bits on a um, community station. Well, I, I'm going to make you. We, I'm going to make you our Oasis correspondent for next year. I want you on all the time when they play because that's great story, and and I I would love to I've have you. I've got more. What? I've got more stories, but good man. I haven't got any time because I've got to go to the bleeding news. You know what it's like, Dave. It's been far too long. It's it great. Has. And he is, fella. Oh, he is. mate, great to have you on. We'll have you again, sir. Don't, don't worry about that lot. Just ignore them. I'm in charge. You're a top, top man. Dave Mason, journalist and music presenter, talking there about the Oasis. Uh, well, they're, they're back together. After 15 years, a world tour in 2025. He makes a good point. How expensive will it be? That was a busy first hour of drive time. And so you want to be part of the next hour? 03444991000.